By now you've probably heard about the Energy East pipeline being on its last leg. Yesterday TransCanada announced that they've applied to suspend their application to build the $13.7 billion project that will bring oil from Saskatchewan and Alberta to Eastern Canadian refineries. It will also help us get our product to market, which is absolutely crucial to us right now because we only have one client in the United States. The company still wants to build the project, but says it might be cancelled due to significant changes to the regulation process that are tied to both upstream and downstream greenhouse gas emissions that they need to review. A press release stated, should TransCanada decide not to proceed with the projects after a thorough review of the NEB's amendments, the carrying value of its investment in the projects, as well as its ability to recover development costs incurred to date, would be negatively impacted. In other words, the same climate change dogma that almost killed Keystone XL is now killing Energy East. On top of the huge investment TransCanada has already made, the project likely won't be economical for them given these new stipulations. Listen to how ridiculous this all is. Canada has the third highest oil reserves on the planet or something, yet we still import conflict oil from countries in the Middle East, where barbaric practices like subjugating women and persecuting LGBTQ members abound. All because professional eco-radicals don't want a pipeline built and some government officials and bureaucrats want to keep their cushy taxpayer-funded jobs. If anything, you'd think our feminist champion of human rights and minorities prime minister would be totally opposed to bringing blood oil into the country. But in actuality, he'll bring in more of it by putting an end to Energy East. And this climate change nonsense stuff that they constantly trot out? Does anyone even believe this? Minister of Environment and Climate Change Catherine McKenna can't even remember where she is because she spends so much time flying around the world making her already huge carbon footprint even bigger. Once again, I mean, this is the, about the opportunity for Canada. We know we're moving to a low carbon future. I was just in uh, Vienna, uh, sorry, I was just in Frankfurt, I'm still a bit jet lagged. The Liberals are killing pipelines without officially having to say so. Out of all things, they want to bring in a competition killing carbon tax that will make everything more expensive. And last year, I told you about how they overhauled the entire NEB process and put their activist friends in charge of the decision making so that they didn't have to do it. And then they shut down the Energy East hearings after a few unruly eco crazies disrupted them in Montreal. It was weird that they were listening to a few anti oil hippies that probably drove to the protest courtesy of fossil fuels, wasn't it? The NEB panel also resigned amidst conflict of interest allegations after that happened and as for the new Liberal appointed panel that replaced them, they're not cutting regulations to Canada's already overregulated oil and gas industry so that these necessary projects can be built faster, they're adding new ones. These are all measures that are sending pipelines on a slow path to death. Just look at how Northern Gateway was thrown in the garbage and TransCanada's decision to try to suspend their application as evidence. Something occurred to me through all of this though. Could the Liberals be stalling Energy East because they think they'll lose the next election if they approve it? The governments of Ontario and Quebec are the only ones pushing back on this pipeline. Yeah, I'm talking about politicians like Montreal sewage mayor that makes deals with Iran. They submitted a list of demands in exchange for the project and what's more is that combined, they represent around 60% of the population and the highest Liberal and NDP voter bases. So who cares about the rest of the country, right? The feds have nothing to gain from us. But this isn't just about the combined population and appeasing Ontarians and Quebecers. Check out this elections map. Look at all that red and orange in the east. You want to know what's even more telling? Look at how many NDP voters switched over to Liberal from 2011. 
Remember the crazy Leap Manifesto, that prominent NDP or sign that pledged to keep all oil in the ground? The Liberals know that they can get even more voters by doing just that, just the way NDPers like it. And guess which voting bases are iffy on this project? Well, according to this forum research poll done last year, only 50% of Liberal voters and 38% of NDP voters support Energy East. Not only that, but of those surveyed, 57% of Ontarians want the pipeline. So what does this all say? Well, the Liberals know that by putting an end to pipeline projects, they'll make a lot of people mad, but they'll get a bunch of votes along the way. Those stats say the majority of Ontarians want the pipeline, not the majority of Liberals or NDP voters that are up for grabs in 2019. That same data I just showed you, even with the lower numbers coming from the Liberal and NDP voters, 55% of the total surveyed across the country approve of the pipeline, while only 32% disapprove, and even still, 13% are undecided. That means even the majority of Canadians want Energy East. It's obvious what the Liberals are doing. This isn't about climate change, and it's not about the environment. They're appeasing their voter base and their potential voter base, even if that means kneecapping prosperity against the will of Canadians, and even if it means supporting our enemies. For the Rebel Dot Media, I'm Holly Nicholas. Thanks so much for watching. If you haven't already, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and never miss an update on all of the news and analysis about pipelines and so much more from Rebel Canada.